Hello everybody, welcome to this update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users like yourselves. Um, before we get into this week's uh, sort of updates, let me give a big thank you to all of the people who fund my work. Essentially, my hours that I work on Inkscape um, are paid for by you and I'm able to basically focus on the things that are important to you because we are sort of developing a community here of paid development in the open source world. Um, and I want to thank you for basically sticking with, with me and putting your trust in my skills and my determination to make Inkscape the very best that it can be, and especially making it the best that it can be for you specifically. If you would like to join, I have links to uh, Ko-fi, to Patreon, and to LibrePay in the description, and thank you again. Okay, so this week, like I promised uh, in the previous video, I'm going to be talking about extensions. And um, we're going to basically be talking about how extensions work and some of the misconceptions that a lot of extension users have, when, especially when it comes to running extensions through Inkscape. So Inkscape has this uh, sort of extensibility to it uh, using a, a programming language called Python. Python is a fairly easy language to learn and to program with, and there's a lot of data scientists and a lot of uh, you know regular people that actually know how to do some Python. So while they may not be master programmers or even professional program programmers in their day to day, they may actually have enough skills to be able to put together something interesting and then make Inkscape do things that Inkscape was never programmed to do. Um, this is especially important because Inkscape itself is, is C++. That's a programming language that's more complicated and, dare I say, more old-fashioned. So um, it's important for us to have a way for uh, different types of people to get involved with the development of Inkscape. Um, but having said that, the, the way in which extensions are formulated, it comes as a surprise, not just to users of Inkscape, but also to a lot of other um, open source pro pro projects, because extensions in Inkscape are mini programs, right? They're individual programs that can run by themselves. And um, most of you are probably surprised by that. Yes, absolutely. Inkscape extensions can be run without Inkscape. You do not need Inkscape to be even installed, really, for a lot of them in order to be able to run a lot of extensions. So why is this important? Well, say, for instance, you're running a website and you have some kind of like automated process where you're taking in a graphic from somebody and then you want to run a bunch of processing and you've got a lovely extension which, you know, converts things into the correct format. A lot of people come into the Inkscape chat and they start asking, hey, how can I run this extension through Inkscape? They start writing a bash command with, you know, action equals do 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 do. None of that is necessary. If the only thing that you need to, to do is run the extensions code, you can just pass the SVG file directly to the extension, run Python, run the extension code that you've written or that somebody you know has written, and it will output an S the SVG output from that. And this is kind of interesting in that, like, this is not usually how a lot of extensions work for a lot of the other pro programs. Usually they have complicated specific APIs. They usually call back into the main program. But we wanted a, an extension system that was kind of uh, a little bit more separated from Inkscape's main development. And this is to do with a, a lot of historical reasons to do with how Inkscape's development is structured. Um, as you know, we don't have a company uh, or any kind of large organization that funds development or organizes things. So a lot of things are done kind of ad hoc and some might say chaotically. Um, but we do try to organize things in such a way as to make it easy for uh, different people to become involved in the project, right? This is a sort of community management first approach. And um, with that regard, we the way I, I structured the, the extension stuff when I reformatted them a few years ago was to ensure that a lot of things that you would want to be able to do in Python, you could do without Inkscape. Having said that, and the reason why I'm talking about extensions this week, it does mean that you have to write a lot of things twice, right? So a programmer who wants just off the top of my hat, wants to talk about color, may have spent months and months writing a bunch of C++ color code, uh, pulling their hair out, becoming incredibly, you know, frustrated at not being able to get a massive branch in. I don't know if you know anybody like that. And 
then you kind of have to do it again. Not exactly the same. Python is different in a lot of ways. And uh, the functionality that we're writing here for the CMYK color code is actually uh, much narrower. Like the support that I need to be able to access isn't the, the same breadth of code that I need to access in C, C++. Inkscape project itself is going to need to be able to do basically everything. Um, the extensions uh, refactoring that I've put in uh, these last few weeks for the color stuff can essentially parse the CMYK stuff, the ICC profile stuff, uh, obviously the usual red, green, blues, some HSL, some HSVs, but that's about it. Like it doesn't go further than that. Um, we, I decided to stop before I decided to add any of the color conversion from ICC profile stuff directly in that code base. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. And of course, because Python is actually easier to write, and I also have uh, the C++ code itself to use as a as a guide, both the stru a structural guide and as a, um, uh, a programming guide, it was it was actually much faster to write. So I've essentially got a lot of the work completed. Um, it's all tested. Uh, the one thing you'll notice about uh, Inkscape's extensions repository is that it is way more thoroughly tested than the Inkscape program itself. Um, this is something that we demand of extensions authors that want to get their extension into uh, Inkscape by default, is that their things, uh, their, their programs are well tested. And we have a lot of um, libraries and APIs that help pro programmers uh, basically achieve that high level of quality. Um, you know, we want to foster a wide community of lots of contributors, but at the same time, we want to foster a, uh, a high quality of code as well. And to do that, I think we do need to be able to provide all of the, the infrastructure and the mentoring and teaching to be able to help uh, basically like computer scientists kind of just reach that new level of quality so that they can, you know, output something that they'd be proud of that like millions of people get access to um, and possibly even thousands of people actually actively use. Um, okay, so I've done all of the color stuff that's great. Um, but I'm sure you guys are kind of in interested in what might be happening for extensions in 1.4. Because don't forget, like the color stuff is going to be a while. Like It's got to go through a lot of testing. It's a part of the GTK4 stuff. It's going to probably be out next year. If not later, we'll see how stability and so on. But I have some good and interesting functionality to show you in 1.4, especially to you, those of you out there who are writing or are thinking about writing extensions yourselves, and that is the actions tag. This is new in 1.4, and what it basically allows you to do is when Inkscape calls an extension, it allows you to request that Inkscape pre-process the SVG before it hands it off to the program, to your Python program. So for example, you're writing a CNC output, you want to be able to burn uh, a, a person's SVG file in onto some wood, right? Your extension works, but it only works with shapes, right? So if you've got a rectangle, it'll do that. If you've got a path, it'll do that. But when it comes to things like text, no go, right? So now you've got to go into your do documentation and tell everybody who wants to use your, your extension, hey, our extension works with shapes. It doesn't work with text. Please convert the text before you do it, etc., etc., et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. But you don't need to do, do that anymore. Now, all of the pre-processing steps that are available to things like plain SVG and some other uh, output types that we have internally in C++, they're all written with this new tag that just says action, and then you say what, what it is that you want to do. And there's a bunch of new actions that are available, including object to path, which will turn all of the text, all of the objects, all of the rectangles, everything that's not a path, into a path. Right, so if you're writing one of these CNC ext extensions, you should be able to get away with, um, if not supporting a lot less, uh, supporting a lot more when it comes to actually using it through Inkscape. And I think that's kind of it. Um, if you have any comments about extensions, I'm probably one of the best people to ask, but we do have a chat room uh, specifically for extensions and for extension to authors. So please do come along to chat.inkscape.org. Um, you can at me at any time. And my also one of my good, good friends, Jonathan, um, he also is involved in basically making sure the, the, the extensions repository and extensions pro like sub -pro project uh, runs efficiently. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope this has been interesting. It's a little more technical than we usually get, get into when it comes to functionality. And um, I can't wait to see what some of you do with the new code.